Hallelujah. What are we saying? My brother, my sister, well, yes, we can look at the cross. And that's good. But we cannot have a life with God really if we don't see that together, together, together all the way. Everybody say together. And the question is, you are together with who? You are together with your anxiety. You are together with your flesh. You are together with your deception. You are together with your oversensitivity. You are together with your opinion. And you will go through your life together with your opinion. Or you are crucified together with Christ. Jesus Christ is crucified. Can you see yourself crucified with him? I know you have seen many pictures of Jesus on the cross. Can you see yourself crucified with Christ? The theme today is what are you doing with your resurrected life? What are you doing with a resurrected life? You are resurrected from the dead. You are raised from the dead. Hello? You were dead in your spirit on your way to burn in hell forever. Then you gave your life to Christ. And what happened? What he came for became a reality. He took all the sins of the world on him. And when you accepted this, when you accepted this, it became a reality. It's just a story. It's just fiction. It's just information. And many, 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 many guys hear the information about the word every Sunday. But it becomes a reality if you accept, if you accept and let it become true that sets you free. Amen? Crucified with Christ. Then died with Christ. Now, like that. Let the hands hang and let the. <laughs> you died with Christ. Then you came here. The one next to the other one. Just lay here. Hmm. Let us. Yeah. You must come. Lay. The only time that you can sleep in the church. <laughs> so, what happened? You were crucified with Christ. You died with Christ. You were buried with Christ. You were buried with Christ. Can you see you in that place? You're supposed to see you in that place. And then from there, Holy Spirit came upon you. When you receive, when you accept that Jesus died for you on the cross, he died, he was buried. When you receive that, when you accept that, then Holy Spirit come and make it a reality. What happened to Jesus then happens to you. Romans 8, 11. If the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in you, how will he then more raise your mortal bodies up to live for him? To live for him. Romans 8, 11. Are you with me? So, so raised from the dead, there you both go. You stand and there you come here and you sit next to one another. So he was raised from the dead, and then he went to his father, and then the word says, we are now seated with Christ in heavenly places. And from there, we have our life. Are you with me? Thank you. Give him a hand. You can go and sit. My brother, my sister, that makes you different than the rest. There's people out there, there's Muslims that uh, believe Jesus was a very... Very, very awesome, awesome man of God. But not the son of God. So there's some guys out there that can live much more holy lives than a lot of us. But the difference, not together, together, together with the son of God. Crucified together with him. Died together. Buried together. Raised together. Seated together in heavenly places. And from that place you live Goes in him, through him, and with him. That's your life. Amen. Are we with one another? But the problem is, yes, Jesus said, if you want to follow me, you need to deny yourself. Because this is the only, pro this is the only process. By denying yourself. Because in denying, the rubbish will die and the new will rise up. But religion also will say something, and that's not deny yourself, that's destroy yourself. And you can walk, you can go and choose. I will not 
go together with God, accept Him, accept Him as my Savior, accept Him through the cross, through death, through burial, through resurrection. I will not accept that. Then automatically you are doing it with somebody else, either with your pride, and together with pride, with pride you will not deny yourself, you'll destroy yourself. Together with your religion, together with a, a prideful attitude with a lot of opinions. I have this opinion, I have that, this justification of certain things in my life, or fear, or anxiety, or pain, or what we want to call it. I need to deal with it at the end of the day. Otherwise, it's not me and Christ crucified. It's me and my flesh crucified so that I will die in it but not be raised. The Spirit of God will not raise the rubbish. He raised Christ and you with Christ. Other demons will try to raise you in your flesh so that they can totally destroy your life. But the question is, together with who? What are you doing in your resurrection? You've been raised with Christ. You have a resurrection life in you. And what are you going to do with it? Let's uh, quickly go to Ephesians 2. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved, and God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realm in Christ Jesus. You have it. Please, my brother, my sister, do it with God. You can do it with your talents. You can be smart. You can be very smart. You can have all the talents. You can have all the skill. You can be known as this man with a lot of answers. And you can do it with all of that. But that, at the end of the day, so many guys that are skillful, doing excellent, excellent things, but not with God, and they are straight going to hell. What a shame. If the source of wisdom, the source of everything is with you. And you can do it with him. And you can have all his input for your life. May God help you. May God help me so that we will understand the process. We're going to Colossians 3. That's just further down the line. Colossians 3. The verse 1, 2, and 3. Since then, we have been raised with Christ. Now you will find that type of sentence a lot in the Bible. It's like God is expecting a lot of things of you. And leaders can challenge you. And brothers and sisters can challenge you. And you need to challenge other people. Why? Because you have been raised with Christ. You have the resurrection power of God in you. Therefore, because he has enabled you, he expects of you. If he didn't enable you, he cannot expect of you. But he enabled you to have an excellent life. He enabled you to walk with him. That's why I expect of you to change certain things in your lifestyle. So that you can have this life with him. Because walking with him, knowing him, that's eternal life. We said this 300 times. John 17 verse. Thank you. John 17 verse 3. This is eternal life. That they may know you, the Father, and the one that you sent, Jesus. Knowing God, that is eternal life. It's not you die and then you go for eternal life. No. You start to live eternal life now. God has set eternity in your heart, the word says. So there's eternal value. There's something that you can build today that you're supposed to build today that has eternal value because at the end of the day when you're going through, your work will be tested through fire if it had eternal value or it was just whatever was nice or not nice. Burnt away and you are saved through fire. May God help you. May God help me. 
in Jesus' name. Since then, since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on the things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Christ seated at the right hand of God. My brother, my sister, since you are raised with Christ and you are seated with Christ in heavenly places, set your hearts and your minds up there. Are you with me? Oh, come on, just somebody say yes. Set your minds on the things above, not on earthly things. Not on earthly things. He said, set your hearts on the things above, verse 1 and verse 2. Set your minds on the things above. Same. Uh, is it not in the new covenant that God will write his laws in your mind and in your heart? So if you are in the new covenant of God and you allow God, you get into you the word of God and you allow the Holy Spirit to put it in your heart, put it in your mind. God challenges you and says, you need to set your mind on what is from above. Set your heart on what is from above. Why? Because God wants to write on your heart, wants to write on your mind, but also in what he has written already. You have the capacity to look at him and think what he is thinking, to feel what he is feeling. That you can look at him. When you know, when you can look at somebody and you know your heart is united with his heart. Unite your night, your heart is the same as his heart. You can look at that person and you just know we're feeling the same about the situation in the honor of God. But uh, unfortunately, in the other way around. Yeah, Amen. People can come to Criari or come for a full-time program or just people. And you know that knoll has this problem. And this knoll also has this problem. For some reason, it's just like this. Beep, and they are connected. <laughs> they just know how to connect. Now with God, well, why, why that? That's a pattern that the devil can copycat because the truth is there. That when you look at him, you look at him through his word. More, the more, the more you set your heart on the things that are from above. You put your mind on the things that is from above. You will find in worship, you will find in nature that you can look at something. You can look at people and you feel what the father is feeling. You think what the father is thinking. More and more and more and more it will happen. And that's awesome. Who experienced that in a positive sense? That you, it happened sometime in your life that you could look at somebody and you just know we are feeling the same thing and it's good. Are you with me? So much more. God wants to draw you into that place because he wants to look at his child and he wants his child to look at him and he wants his child to know what is he as father is feeling. Your father wants you to know what he is feeling. When you look at him and he is looking at you. Oh man, that's life and that can be beautiful. Please, my brother, my sister, may we wake up in that. Then verse 3. Four. You died. Why? First he said, you've been raised with Christ, so I expect the following of you. Heart set above. Mind set above. And carries on. Why? For you died. This earthly thought patterns, this earthly heart's desires, heart that can be deceived more than anything else. You died. That rubbish died. And your life is now hidden with Christ. God has a beautiful life for you, like we said. God has a beautiful life for you. God has an excellent life with you. God has a life with you with substance, where there's something good in it. Where you can know what I did last week, it, I have the boldness that it can stand forever, for generations. What you did last week, the next generation must be able to build on it. Let it be so. But let God test it then, now. Let the things be shaken, so that you can break down that what is rubbish, that what was not from God, so that... You can build accurately for the next generation or other people to build on what you have laid as foundation through your life. Are we here? You're still here? Please, 
But now your life is hidden with Christ. Now, God, I want to see that beautiful life that you have for me. You cannot unless you understand that together, that together. I've been, first one, I've what with Christ? Oh, anybody? Crucified with Christ? Just say that. Crucified with Christ? And then you died with Christ. Then you were buried with Christ. Then you were raised with Christ. Then you were seated with Christ in heavenly places. And from that place, you can look at him and find in him a hidden life. A hidden life that you're supposed to seek. Seek. Seek your life. Seek the kingdom. Seek the life. Where? In him. How can you seek the kingdom? The rest will follow. What is the kingdom? It's his authority. What he feels. What he says. When you look at him, you find in him the final authority. You cannot look for the kingdom. You cannot seek the kingdom if you don't have him. Because in him you find the kingdom. In him you there's the authority. The authority of the kingdom is in him. That's why he says... All authority has been given to me, therefore you just do what I say. Finish. And if you understand how you've been crucified, died, raised, seated with him, then you will understand his authority. Then you will have respect for his authority. When he says, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Therefore, if you respect my authority, if you believe that me, Jesus Christ, has the final authority in heaven and on earth, you will go and you will make disciples. Look at your life and how many times you've spoken to people about Christ. Then you'll know how you, far you started to respect his authority. If you never speak to people about Christ, you take your fear, and your personality, and your issues, and your wara wara, whatever it will be, as the final authority. But maybe you must give Christ the final authority. And if you have given him the final authority... You'll do what he says. Go therefore, make disciples, baptize them, teach them to obey. Not teach them so that they will know a lot. Not teach them so that they know all the doctrines and all the theology. No, teach them to obey. Teach them how to come in this relationship where they, where they will respond accurately to their God. And their accurate response to your God is obedience. Obedience is your accurate response. God will help you and me. We believe so in Jesus' name. Are you, are you still here? Ah, please, are you still here? So, life hidden in Christ because when Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. That day you will stand ashamed Billions will stand ashamed and billions will enter. Billions will stand ashamed in their day for eternal damnation and billions will stand amazed. Let's say ashamed or amazed. Now tomorrow you can stand ashamed. No, rather, rather tomorrow, God, when Christ appear, you will stand ashamed or amazed. But Christ, please reveal yourself tomorrow. Appear, please, in my, in my daily walk. Appear in the meeting. Appear in my, in my weakness. Appear in my strength. Appear in my success. That I need to know, must I stand ashamed in the sense of I turn? Not ashamed so that I, I'm condemned. No. But say, whoa, I cannot believe I did this. I said this. Anybody, were, you were there? You know, when you have some, not fight. You never, we never fight with people. Or a spouse or somebody. Hey. <laughs> what are we saying? When I, it's opened up. In the light. God never wants to shame you. He wants to restore you. He makes you want to make you beautiful. So if you start to point the finger. Be careful. Point the finger. Then the devil can use it. Open the hand towards God. Hello? Are you with me? And let your hand serve people. Let your hand bless people. And not point the finger at people. God will help you. Demon of religion will let you point the finger at people. But God's mercy, God's grace, and the cross of Christ will let, 
that your hand will support people and your hand will bless people. Let's say, support people. Try that with your hand. Support people. Bless people. Not judge people. Why are you pointing at me? <laughs> okay. Are you still here? When Christ, who is your life, Christ is my life. When my life appear, Christ is my life. When he appear, my life appear because he is my life. Are we with one another? Christ is my life. And when my life appear tomorrow because I'm resurrected with him, when my life appear that has eternal value, what will happen? I will get the rest of life that is actually of no eternal value. I will get it in line. I will turn from this rubbish. The, actually, the next verse. Put to death, therefore, the rest. Whatever belongs to the earthly nature. Sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, greed, blah, 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 a lot of things. Put to death. Why? Life appeared. And that's Christ. You went and you go through this process. When you see rubbish, how will you put to death all this other rubbish? You look at the cross. You look at the cross. You tell this lust, this fear, this thing. You are crucified with Christ. You die. And Holy Spirit will not resurrect you. Holy Spirit is not going to resurrect your anxiety, your fears, your immaturity. He's not going to resurrect that. He will help you that that rubbish is crucified. Yes, he will help you that it dies through the word of God. Hello? But he will not in his faithfulness resurrect that rubbish. The devil and the demons will try to resurrect that as far as possible. But not the Holy Spirit. Oh, God will help you to put it to death. But when he died, when it is gone, your spirit that was dead hello that what was beautiful from God he raised are you with me you can put it to death but then you must allow God through the cross the word of the cross is the power of God unto salvation you want to see salvation tomorrow you want to be saved from your fears tomorrow you want to be saved from intimidation from immaturity from inferiority you compare yourself with others and you feel inferior and then you compare yourself to others and then you feel superior so now you feel good about yourself so it's inferior superior inferior superior and it's just a lot of rubbish because you just need to understand your value. Then you don't have to play the game of inferiority, superiority based on your performance, based on what people say to you, based on how you see people and compare yourself. All that rubbish can die if you find yourself in him. But lose the rubbish, lose yourself. Deny yourself, take up the cross, the identity, and then follow him. Otherwise, you can destroy yourself, take up the identity of a loser, take the identity of this prideful, success, successful person that I think I am. But meanwhile, I'm trying to be someone. But I'm already someone in Christ. Don't try to be someone. Why? Because God didn't do a good job. Oh, okay, say it to him then. And you say, I'm going to try to be someone because with God I cannot. But otherwise, let it die on the cross. Hello. Just smack your neighbor, give him a holy smack and say, hey, you are very special. Okay. Emil, clap yourself. <laughs> okay. You will appear with him. You will appear with him. When you, when you accept Christ as your life tomorrow, God promises, God promises, when you put to death the rubbish, he, you will appear with him. The last time for this. When Christ, who is Christ, who is your life, when he appears tomorrow in your situation, then you also will appear with him. What you? The beautiful you, the excellent you, the precious you will appear with him tomorrow. But tomorrow fear can appear. Lust can appear. Intimidation can appear. Compromise. You laugh at the same sick joke. Than the other guys. 
All that rubbish can appear. And you will appear with that rubbish at the end of the day. You will appear with the rubbish. You will become like the rubbish. People will see the rubbish. You talk rubbish. You think rubbish. You, you go with rubbish. Not things that we will call rubbish always. But you will appear tomorrow with bad bitterness. You choose that bitterness. That voice speak to you. When people see you, they can see you appear with bitterness. Or you appear with fear. You appear with dis disappointment. You appear with depression. You appear with your compromise. People can see you are that type of guy. You compromise. But let's say like in a relationship, that lady must see in you, mister, that you appear with integrity. You appear with trust. You appear with a, with a respect for God. Then that lady can trust you. No, he will respect me. Appear with who he is. That's a promise from God if you allow that. Since you are raised. Therefore, mind set on what he is thinking. Heart set on what he is thinking. And then you will become more like him. Because in that, when you th start to try to think what he is thinking, think with your heart, think with your mind, he says, then the life hidden with Christ will become revealed. It will be revealed. It will be revealed. I pray that Holy Spirit will guide you, my brother, my sister, will help you to understand how to open up this awesome present, present this awesome precious life that He has given you. But it's not possible except through the cross. It's not tomorrow you're in a situation and you want to have beauty in your life. But it's only through the cross if you want to do it with him. If Christ must be, if he must appear in your work, appear in your dreams, appear in your relationships, appear in your tomorrow, in your future, do it with God. Make sure you put to death the rubbish. That means something that has died has no authority anymore in you. But walk away from it because you won't believe it. A rat that died has a certain aroma. Or must we say a certain stench. Okay. You leave the rotten rubbish there. You have a, will have a stench. The stench of your life will reach others. But you will not even know there's a stench. But if you walk with God, the aroma, the fragrance of Christ, the word says to Corinthians, will come through you. The freshness of life. People will smell the freshness of life. Let's say, people will smell the freshness of life through me. Okay. Let it be so. Can we also awesome, men? I know, it's not clickety-click and now we have a wonderful life. Not at all. <laughs> you need to seek. You need to seek. You need to put the minds there. You need to push your mind to think, to be busy with what is from God. And what is from God is this. Okay? You put your eyes on God and the, your telephone. Hello, Lord. Are you with me? Let's make as if we are in the children's church. Hello, Lord. <laughs> You are not the Lord. <laughs> are you with me? So he has all the thoughts. And you have the capacity in your mind to hear all the thoughts. You have the capacity in your heart to hear and to feel what he's feeling. So sometime maybe take your Bible and say, God, thank you that I can feel what you are feeling. Thank you that I can think what you are thinking. Maybe one time, tonight or sometime, do that with your Bible. When you feel, I don't know where the heck I'm going. Thank you, Lord, that I can think what you are thinking. It's not clickety-click, what's that? The law of deficient, hey? Deficient. From a lot. Yes. No, you don't know what I'm talking about. Some of you. Thank you. 
But I'm saying, please, get into that place, get into the word, get into the word, get into the word, and you will know what he is thinking. You will take it in your heart, what he is feeling. And then you can say in your heart, the word says, and he said in his heart, let me do this. Whoa, it can be very dangerous when you speak in your heart. But you, you, you're going to speak in your heart. Your heart is a voice. The man said in his heart, let me do this because the master is taking time. Let me do this. Let me do this. And at the end, that ma the guy was ashamed. He went to hell. What do you say in your heart? In your heart, you need to say what he is saying. In your mind, the word says, take the thoughts captive whoosh, unto obedience to Christ. Obedience in what sense? Take your, the thoughts captive so that your thoughts will only think what he is thinking. You cannot know what he is thinking unless you get into his thinking. I said that enough now. Okay. Why? You want me to finish? <laughs> Okay, God's going to help you. God's going to help me. Last time, so first of all, you, we are? I give you all the crap notes. <laughs> then you? Then you were? Then you were? Then you are? And then you? <laughs> find a life that was hidden in Christ. And you find yourself in there. As you think what he thinks, as you feel what he feels. Okay? And then you will find that excellent, excellent life. Thank you, Father, for who you are. Thank you for your beauty. God, thank you that you've showed us the way. Thank you, Lord, that we can follow you out of ourselves. Oh, God, that is just rubbish. Dead works that will come to nothing. Forgive us for walking with pride, for walking with fear, walking with anxiety, walking with religion, walking for, with justification in things that we do and not do. Forgive us, Lord. We leave that things right now. Pray for every man, woman in this place that they will turn their backs on that rubbish right now. And that we will walk out here with you alone. But God, we can only walk out here with you alone as we choose the way of the cross, the word of the cross. We can boast in nothing, Lord, of what we've done. Even in what we've done good, in that what we know. But we can only boast in the cross of Christ. For where, for who, I'm from that place where I'm crucified, I'm dead to the world. And I'm alive for you alone. Thank you, Lord, that we can be seated with you in heavenly places, have, having your perspective on life and the world and the nations. Help us, help us through your spirit and your grace to find this hidden awesome life in you that you've set aside for each one of us. I pray that you will give us the grace and the courage to have that commitment to find ourselves in you and in you alone. We thank you, Lord, that you come and do that in Jesus' name. As all say, amen, amen. Let it be so.